All right, D&D enthusiasts, I want to give a shout out to my most excellent Dungeon Master friend, Bobby. I have the great fortune to be playing in an upcoming Returning to the Keep on the Borderlands, or I should say the classic module Keep on the Borderlands for D&D 5th Edition Hardcore Mode on Tabletop Campaign. And I'm going to put down there in the info box and pin in the comments the link to his channel where you can see Session Zero. We went through character creation, and you can subscribe and follow our adventures. And I'm really, really excited to be a part of this campaign based on character creation alone. And I'm not going to give away any spoilers in Session Zero, but we had to make some hard decisions. I had to make some really hard decisions And this is not a character that I regularly play. I mean, I was open to playing any character, but I never have, I never could have seen this based on the dice rolls. So one of the ways that we were approaching the campaign in hardcore mode, and there's no right or wrong in D&D. I just feel like as a dungeon master, letting the players know so they can adjust accordingly ahead of time, we had decided no point by. No baby cakes, no averages. You roll 3d6, and that's what you get line by line. Not even 4d6 drop the lowest. 3d6 for strength, 3d6 dex, and and you go through, and that's what you have. Understanding that the module is going to be very, very hard. This is not just like an auto-win god mode 5th edition module. This is the classic red box that has been updated, but still keeping that, that those lethal aspects to 5th edition, the idea was you get one 14. You've got like an auto-populated 14 roll sitting out there. So this way, if you get some really bad rolls or you get kind of average rolls and you want to bump one thing up, you could slot that 14 in if you need it. You know, you might roll higher or better. And in character creation, since we didn't really know what we were going to get, Session Zero was very, very focused on Let's roll up our characters and then make the decision who's playing what based on those stats. Now, D&D 5th assumes you've got a balanced party. They want to send you in with a minimum of four characters. You've got kind of the tank slash fighter. You've got the arcane. You've got the divine healer. You've got some sort of support class, usually a rogue or a ranger. Um, As soon as you start to deviate from that or expand beyond that, it, it could be challenging. So there was the possibility... And we have three veteran players, those of us who've been playing D&D for a while, and we have three relatively brand new, but very, very excited players. So we've got a very good dynamic mix of ideas that are going to be coming into this game. Ideally, we want a balanced party. But look, the dice are literal gods. If, they, if we all rolled up like 16, 17, 18 strength, 16, 17, 18 con, then, and like, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9 charisma... We're all going in as barbarians. We're just going to cleave absolutely everything. Magic, Krom looks down on magic. We don't even need magic from that perspective. Heals, we're so diesel up, we don't even need heals. If if that's what would have happened, um, that's where we would have gone. Some of the characters in the party, traditional characters. Others, we had to make some hard choices. I had to really decide based on the roles. And if you've been following my vlogs, my D&D vlogs, or you've had the chance to see some of my other games where you get a point by or you get to play a character you want, I, I usually play wizards or sorcerers for a variety of reasons. That's, that's like Fritz's go-to favorite class. I'm not playing a wizard. I'm not playing a sorcerer. Second tier would be a monk. I, I like playing monks, but usually... I defer to the role of the party, meaning we have significant fighters. We don't need a second-tier fighter, although, you know, Monk can do a lot of different things. That class can do a lot of different things. So usually, again, playing a wizard, I have, I have that arcane system support locked in. I'm not playing a monk. This is a character class that I rarely play. It's a character class that I'm excited. I'm the least familiar with as a player. You know, as, as a DM, I, I know what they can do. I've had them in a number of uh, adventures, a number of campaigns. But the other interesting aspect is this character class, and then I'll let you guys, again, check it out in the link, was not included in the original module. You know, I was, I was thinking about this after the fact, as I'm filling in the character sheet and figuring out uh, what we're going to do. 
I don't know how this is going to adapt to keep on the borderlands. This is going to be real. I am really excited because not only is this something that I don't regularly play, this is something that was not included in the original module. So what are the opportunities that I could bring to the party? What are the opportunities that I could bring not only from a role-playing perspective, but from a tactica perspective? And again, I'm not a, a meta gamer. I'm not a min-max gamer. Um, you, you can't if you're just rolling 3d6. You can't rely on your power stats. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, we're kicking things off. I, I've got to check through some of my notes. I got to check through some YouTube here and, and brush up on this character because I'm, I'm a noob with this. I really, it's interesting to see the twist of a veteran D and D player now going into a pretty hardcore module with minimal experience in this character class and uh, in a good way, in a fair way, I've got to pull my own weight. I've got to make sure I'm on top of those things. So I'm really, really excited. And it'll be very, very interesting to see how this character class plays out.